I'm Robbie Griffiths and we're here today at Western Pools Fishery near Oswald Street and I'm going to show you how I'd approach a typical winter session. So Western is a typical commercial fishery where you're looking at 150 or even 200 pound in the summer of carp or F1s but I want to show you how you can go about approaching all of the different species that are available so we've got eyed, skimmers, crucians, everything that you would try and avoid catching in the summer and how they can help you to reach your 50 or 60 pound target weight in the winter to either frame or win the match here. So I'm going to be approaching three different lines today. Firstly, I've got my long line, which I've chosen to fish 11 meters today. Often I'd fish 13 meters, but when I come on to how I'm going to feed in a bit, you'll realize why I'm fishing 11 meters today, because it's all down to the conditions. So I've got my longer line, which is 11 meters. So with that one, I'm going to be fishing on the bottom. And even though it's winter, I'm also going to have rigs set up for fishing through the water and even up to kind of two and a half feet deep shallow where certain species are going to still be living in this weather. I'm going to have a short line at five metres. That's a must have at any venue this time of year because those bigger wise F1s, they will still feed at that distance later on in the session. And then again, quite similar to the five metre line, I'm going to have an edge rig and that, that one there, you're going to be looking at three or four feet of water. It's not going to work every single time, but if those bigger fish do decide to feed later on, that's where they're going to do it. Okay, so moving on to rigs. So for my long line, I'm going to be fishing a nine Dura slip. That's a perfect elastic for, for kind of any species. If you do happen to hook a carp, which is unlikely in this weather, it's still going to handle them. But for F1s, it's perfect. Eyed and skimmers, you're not going to bump them off and lose them. And even your small roach, which they all add up, you're just not going to lose them on this kind of gear. So I've got two back shot there to help me to keep the, the float controlled and then this is really important i've got a 4x12 f1 maggot float so i've got a nice light float and that's because i want that bait to fall nice and slowly through the water especially in the last kind of 18 inches to two feet so i've not got many shot on this at all i've got a little bulk there which is approximately 18 inches from the hook and then all i've got down from that is two number 11 droppers and that just means that when the water's crystal clear like it is today, the fish can follow the maggots down and that last kind of 18 inches of water, they can watch the bait fall and that's often when you're gonna get your bites, you, you'll get them straight away as your float settling. So I've got a four inch hook length and that's just 0.11 reflow power and then an 18 SFL hook. So no need to go too small on the hook. We're gonna be fishing a double maggot today. So a size 18 is absolutely perfect for that. The rig for the five meter line is virtually identical. All I'll do is I'll just make it a little bit more positive with the shot in. So I'll just move that bulk a little bit closer to the hook. Still have two droppers, but everything's a little bit more positive there. Moving on to the margin rig, that's where things change a little bit. So we've stepped up to an 11 Dura slip, so slightly heavier. That's just because we're expecting, if we do get any bites there, them to be slightly bigger fish, perhaps a carp, F1s, or even something like a barbel. I've actually gone for a heavier float, even though the water's a lot shallower. So I've gone for a 4 by 14 and that's because I just want to keep the bait nice and still when it's there. I'm not going to be feeding it like I am the other lines. I just, once I put the bait in, I want it to sit there and just wait for a bite off a bigger fish. So I've shot that accordingly. So with this one, I've just got a little strong taper of shot just above the four inch hook length. Again, it's just going to keep it nice and still. And then I've actually gone for a size 16 SFL 
to a, a 0.13 reflow power. And again, that's because I'm going to fish two or maybe even three maggots on that rig. So final rig of the day, and this is one that's probably going to be one of the most important. As I say, even though it's freezing cold, we're in the middle of winter now, I do expect to still catch some fish off the bottom. And to do that, I'm fishing a seven jaw slip as you want something really nice and light. You, the last thing you want to do is catch a fish and it to splash in the clear water. Now I've got a much longer line than you'd normally fish shallow between your pole tip and your float. That's important because as I say, the water's clear. You want to keep that pole tip away from the feeding fish. I've got a four by eight F1 shallow, which is a really nice light float. And again, completely different to how you had shot a shallow rig in the summer. I've just got number 12 spread out all the way through the rig. So I've set this about two and a half feet deep and it's just gonna fall nice and slowly through the water, again to a size 18 SFL. So this sort of rig, I could just flick it out um, and, and just wait for the float to slowly cock and then you get a bite. If you don't get a bite, you can do the same again, feed a couple more maggots. You're not looking to feed heavily with this rig, it's just a few maggots, swing your rig into it and look to catch those nice eyed. So that's everything with the rigs. Nice and simple, but you've just got to be careful this time of year that you let the fish see the bait as it falls through the water. That's one of the most important things for me, especially when you're fishing for a wide variety of species. So moving on to the bait, it couldn't be much more simple really. All we've got is maggots. I've got plenty of them. I've got three pints, which is more than enough for a session like this. You're going to be feeding these across three different lines, so you do still need, need a few maggots in case the fish are feeding well. One of the most important things is to make sure you've got some really good quality maggots. They need to be a decent size because we're going to be using a catapult today. And one of the most important things when using the catapult is to make sure that you can group it nice and tightly around the float. So having nice big maggots, a consistent size is going to help you do that. So now we've seen the rigs and the bait, it's nice and simple. Let's move on to the fishing and see how it goes. Okay, so to start the session today, we're going to start on that 11 meter line. We're going to start on the bottom, so kind of on the negative rig, if you like. So I put a double maggot on. I'm just going to put a few maggots into the pot. Just put a little bit of water into the pot just to help them stay in there. And then we're going to ship out to the spot. So when I plumb this swim up, it's actually shallower at 11 metres by a couple of inches than it is at 5 metres. And that's because we've got an island just over to our right. So when we're laying the rig in, we just need to make sure we're not swinging it out towards our island. Otherwise, we're going to be fishing well over depth. So just feed your bait and lay your rig in nicely to the left, which is into the open water where it's going to be a little bit deeper. And there we go. Something's taking it on the drop, which is a good sign. It might be a small fish, but... As we said, today we're fishing for literally everything because I know at some point we're going to have some better fish turn up. So we've got a little roach there, but that's a couple of ounces. That's taken, what, 30 seconds to catch. So we're quite happy with that as a start. So I'll just repeat the process. So fishing quite negatively to start with, just for a pot, but We'll see how we get on them. I don't think it'll be very long before we get the catapult out and try and draw some slightly better fish into the peg. So again, laying that rig to the left into the open water, just tapping the maggots in and then just hold the float just out of the water to let it settle. Straight away again. So there's obviously fish there, so I, don't, I think we'll get the catapult out straight away to be honest. A slightly better fish this one. That's one of the many eyed in here. There we go. 
So these are absolutely perfect fish for in the winter because they feed no matter what the water temperature and that's probably, I'm guessing, 10 or 12 ounces. So brilliant weight builders. If you're only looking for 60 pounds, you don't need that many of those to make that weight up. So generally we'd be looking for, if we're looking for 50 or 60 pounds, you can quite easily catch say 20 or 30 pound of fish like that and then you're going to catch a few of those slightly bigger F1s later on in the session to help boost the weight. So this time I'm not going to put anything in the pot, I'm just going to ship out and then we're going to catapult a few maggots into that spot. So again, lay the rig in. You want to be nice and accurate, so it's important you've got a catapult with nice light elastic. You don't want the maggots flying everywhere. So there we go. Pretty much all of those around the float. That'll just help draw fish. Creates a bit more noise, it'll draw fish in from a bigger area. But you've got to be careful because it can at times produce plenty of liners if there's fish at all depths of water that's when that shallow rig comes into play and you'll find that you can catch a few fish shallow and then once they're kind of out of the peg then you can go back onto the bottom and you just alternate between the two keep the fish coming all day this is a slightly better one there we go, a little F1. There's plenty of those in here as well. So, of course, you can target these sort of fish on other baits like pellets and corn, but for me, it's just that's a lot more selective. So, you're gonna, you, you will catch some of these, but you, you're not gonna catch those fish like the eye, the chub, the skimmers, which are all important. There we go, so that's only a small one. Again, similar size to the Eide really, about 12 ounces. Pop them in the net. So one thing I touched on briefly before was hook size. A lot of people want to use a tiny hook in the winter, a size 20. Which don't get me wrong, on some days that can be the right way to go. But where possible, I'd much prefer to use an 18 or even a 16 using two two of these big maggots that will easily cover the hook and it just means that you're going to hook a lot more fish and ultimately land a lot more fish it's actually a sign there on the surface already so you often get one or two of the eye are a bit brave and they'll come up for the maggots as soon as you start fishing for them and they're not quite as easy to catch as they look so when we're plumbing up the peg here we're not looking for a specific depth on this longer line. Obviously, we don't want to be fishing too close to that island where the water gets a lot shallower, but just general open water, that's where you're going to be able to draw the most fish from. There we go, there's another one. Oh, come off. That can be the problem when you start catapulting bait. You can start to foul look an odd one. We'll keep at it for now, but that shallow rig is not going to stay unused for much longer, I don't think. So the plumbing upside of it is probably more important on your short and on your edge lines. So on your five meter line, you're definitely looking, there's generally a shelf on commercial fisheries. So you're looking to fish at the bottom of that shelf in the deeper water. And then your edge line is going to be up that shelf. So you're looking at, basically you've got two short lines, five meters and your edge, and you're looking at two different depths of water there. So you're kind of covering different options. When plumbing up with this style of fishing, quite simple really, you just want to be plumbing up to the bottom of the body of the float, so you're ever so slightly over depth, but nothing too much. As I say, we're fishing for a wide variety of fish, so it's not like you're fishing for bream and, and putting plenty of bait in and laying on. You, you, it's an active style of fishing. 
and you want those bites to register on the float straight away. Yeah, there's plenty of fish there now. Another little left one. So I think they've stocked some in here recently. And these, this will be one of those. So these are quite a bit smaller. So probably only about six ounces. But again, worthwhile catching. It's all about keeping putting something in the net all day. You don't want any long blank spells. Which, if you are fishing baits like pellets or corn, you could quite happily sit there for half an hour not get any bites while everybody else who's fishing maggots is putting something in the net and come the end of the match or your session it's going to make a massive difference so another vital element with this style of fishing is just keeping everything nice and smooth so the roller position is really important. You want a nice big roller, big target behind you. You're not going to bash anything and knock these fish off. Especially when it comes to eye, they seem to have a habit of falling off on the way in. So you want everything to be super smooth and make sure you get them in the net. So when you're doing this and fishing on the bottom like I am now, but feeding with a catapult, you're best off normally kind of feeding once or twice and then just sitting there and leaving it. If you keep on firing bait in every few seconds, that's when you do get difficulties with the fish coming off the bottom and just feeding at all different depths of water. There we go, another lovely little left one. Uh, absolutely perfect these, definitely the ones they've just stuck. So one thing I'm a massive fan of in the winter is adjusting my shotting patterns throughout the day, depending on how, how it's fishing. So as I said, with this one today, I've started with the bulk of shot 18 inches from the hook. Sometimes if it's difficult or if the water's particularly clear and you're waiting for bites, I'll actually move that bulk even further away and just have a couple of droppers really spaced out so those fish can really take their time and watch the bait falling through the water. That can work particularly well if you're faced with um, like bigger eyed where you're not catching as many of them and they do really like to watch the bait fall through the water again if we if we were catching lots of f1s like we are now and and less silver fish then i'd probably be inclined to put the shot a little bit closer to the hook just so it's a little bit more of a positive rig but yeah it's very important to to move those shot around in the winter and find out the best positions for them um, so for that reason, I always use stocks in the winter because they slide nice and easily on the line. They don't damage it. And you can just adjust it throughout the session to maximize your bites, basically. So I think we'll have one or two more on this rig. And then there's definitely a few eyes coming up shallow now. So we'll get that one out and uh, see if we can catch a few of those. There we go, another one on the bottom, but there's definitely plenty of fish shallow now, so once we've got this one in, I think we're going to get that shallow rig out and just see whether we can catch a few of those. I'm pretty sure they're eyed that are coming shallow, and it's lovely catching these F1s, but they are potentially smaller than, than the eyed are going to be. So again, around six ounces, that little F1. Whereas the eye, they can run up to a couple of pounds in here. So let's get that rig out and uh, see what we can get. Right, so we're going to have a go at fishing shallow now. So I've got double maggot on the hook again. We've got that nice spaced out rig with the number 12 stots. And then we've got a nice long line between the pole tip and the float just to help the eye's confidence basically and keep them away from, from the pole tip. So one thing I like to do this time of year when I'm doing this style of fishing is to basically ship out about three quarters of the way and then feed. Again, it's all about just trying to gain the fish's confidence so your pole tip's not right over their head. So I'm going to feed. 
And then I'm basically going to ship out and swing the rig into them. That's where that longer line comes into play. So there we go. I've swung it into them. And you're almost mugging the fish once you've fed, fed them. So it is an eyed, as expected. But these are great weight builders in the winter. They'll feed in the coldest weather. And if you're looking for 50, 60 pounds, these can kind of quite often average 12 ounces to a pound, so you don't need many fish at all. So that one there is probably around 10 or 12 ounces. So again, we're just going to repeat that process now. So ship part way out, and again, important to be nice and accurate, we're going to feed into that feeding area at 11 metres. Just looking at putting about a dozen maggots out, and then we just swing that rig right into the area. Oh, they had a bite there. Normally get two or three swings into the area before then you have to refeed. There we go. So I had to wait a little while for that bite, but you've got to remember I'm fishing two and a half feet deep with those shots spaced right out. So you can give the fish a little bit of time when that bait's still falling to, to its final depth. It's not like when you're fishing a bulk rig and you only get a couple of seconds before it's at a standstill. Do you see how important that light elastic is? There's absolutely no disturbance when you hook them. goes nice side this one there we go perfect so that one's definitely over a pound a beautiful fish and you'd be more than happy catching those all day So one thing I've not mentioned yet is the importance of feeding the other lines. So even though we're catching a fish every time we're going out there at the moment, that may not be the case all day. So fish in the winter, funny creatures, they can disappear at any time. So you just need to make sure you've got plenty of traps set for if that does happen. So on the short line, I'm going to feed about 15 maggots. And I'm not going to do that every time I ship in and out, but I'm going to, at this early stage of the day, I'm going to kind of do that every 10 or 15 minutes I'm going to say so just throw them in nice and accurate in that kind of five meter area where you're going to be fishing and again I'm going to do exactly the same in the edge but I'm going to feed a few more here and even less often so I'm probably only going to do this every 15 or 20 minutes and then I'm going to start feeding it heavier as I look to fish it in the last hour or so so today I've plumbed up down this left hand edge and it looks really nice to that platform but on plumbing it up, the, the water depth there is just too shallow. It would be perfect in the summer where you're looking at two foot of water. But today I've had to come a little bit off it. And I'm, I'm looking at about three and a half feet, which is perfect because the water is clear. And I've actually just gone within a range where I can throw the bait, which is really handy. I, I don't have to stop for a couple of minutes and get my cup out and put my bait in every time I want to feed it. So I can just, just get my maggots. I've lined up with, there's another little wooden platform further along, so I know exactly where I'm throwing them. And then, there we go, that's a perfect area. And that I won't look at that again now for perhaps another 20 minutes and I'll do the same, just to try and get a few fish feed in there for later on in the day. So, back onto the shallow rig, and let's uh, hope for another, another nice eyed. So, again, double maggot. Double for some reason is always better than a single maggot, no idea why. But again, it helps with my style of fishing, with getting away with those bigger hooks. So, feed a few more. That wasn't the best shot, so give it a go again. That's it, that's better. You can see there's plenty of fish there, we're seeing indications on the surface. Swing that rig into them. 
There we go. That shotting pattern just gives them so much time to see the bait going through the water. And in my opinion, this time of year, it's, it's vital. You will catch a few fish, don't get me wrong, fishing a bulked shallow rig, but just giving them that time to feed definitely catches you some more fish. These really are the perfect fish to be catching in the winter. So we're catching them so quickly now and they're getting on for a pound each. Even if you, you did have some carp in your swim, you'd have to catch them pretty quickly to catch as many as we are of these. Go. I'd can be the most, most frustrating fish to catch. They're so easy at times, and other times you know there's thousands of them in the lake and you just can't catch them. But we're certainly lining a few up today. So, the best way to play an eyed is to keep your pole really low and then just at the last second just lift it up and net them. That is by far the best way I've found of playing them. If you lift your pole up high from, from the moment you hook them and, and ship them back with a high pole, they just splash about on the surface and they do have a habit of coming off. This could be really annoying when they're nice quality fish like that. So just keep your pole really low. When you get to your top gear, just drag your pole tip very, very slowly to the side and you'll just see the fish just swimming underneath the surface. The last second, lift it up and then it's straight in the net. They don't fight like carp and F1s, they're just, yeah, very, very relaxed the way that they fight, but they do have a horrible habit of falling off. So we'll try and, we'll hook another one and we'll just go through that, that playing process. So important to keep on feeding, but you notice that I don't go mad with the feeding, so it's not like when you're fishing for F1s in the summer where you, feeding when you've landed one and you're feeding three or four times so once or twice just put a bit of bait out there and then swing your rig in so it's nice and simple shallow fishing really miss that one so again just don't feed again just swing it out into that area those maggots will still be falling through the water missed another one so do that once more and then I probably will have to refeed again if I miss this one. There we go. That's why I've got one. So this one, it's quite funny, that does happen quite often. If you don't get one straight away and it's the second or third time, then you'll get a different species like an F1, which I think is what we've got here. So even though we've got this really light gear on, it's more than up to handling F1s. There we go. So nice bonus fish. So that's that's one of the, the proper F1s really from in this lake. So you're getting on for kind of pound and a half, two pound. Nice chunky one. And a definite bonus. So more than happy to catch those. But that's, it, it can pay sometimes just to have a, another rig where your bait will fall through the water a bit quicker and you can just sit there if there's plenty of those in your peg. Obviously they're very useful additions as well. So as you've seen, the fishing's been absolutely fantastic today on that 11 metre line. We started off on the bottom, catching a bit of a mixture of species, a couple of eyed, some small F1s, crucians, etc. And then we went shallow once we saw those eyed appear and they, they really helped boost our weight. But as it comes towards the end of the day, you cannot ignore the short line and that's what we're going to have a look at now. So, as I said earlier, we've been feeding maggots every 10 minutes or so on that 5 metre line. 
not dried it at all yet, so this is going to be the first drop in. So again, double maggot on the hook, and we're just going to drop it in, throw a few more maggots over the top and see what happens. So it's important that you have a nice marker on the far bank for this line, so you know where you've been throwing your bait. So I've got a couple of trees across there that I've been aiming towards. Just lower your rig in. You just want to throw a dozen or 15 maggots over the top of it. And the hope is that those bigger F1s have been, been feeding on those maggots you've been throwing in all day. And that, they're waiting for us now. So this rig here now, I'm happier to sit and wait for the bite. As I say, they're bigger fish that we're targeting. So you can just keep the rig nice and still and just wait for an indication. So when I've plumbed up this line, I've looked to kind of go at the bottom of the shelf. So I want some nice deep water. And really importantly for me, when you're, when you're shot and you float, you want it nice and dotted down. So they are shy biting this time of year for all of the fish, but particularly these wise crafty F1s. So you want the least resistance possible when they, when they take the bait. This, this lake does just gradually shelf down and that is kind of the deepest water we've got there. That's top kit and two, two other sections and it's actually slightly deeper there than it is at 11 metres where we've been catching the bulk of the fish. So again, because we're fishing maggots on this line, you can catch all sorts of species here, but the likely it is because you're fishing closer in, you're going to catch less of your roach and your eyed and things like that. They feed a lot more positively on the longer line. So this, this line here basically just gives the opportunity for those bigger F1s, possibly even a carp, to, to kind of sit there uninterrupted, just eating a few maggots all day and just waiting for when we go onto that line. There we go, first proper bite on this line. I don't know what this is to be fair. It's fighting uh, a little bit funny. Oh, there we go, crucian. <laughs> Always nice to catch. So this is another classic example of fish that people try and avoid in the summer months. But in the winter, they're, they're more than welcome. So I'll be happy catching those all day. Another great little weight builder. Not exactly what we're after on that rig, but we'll take it. Again, I'm fishing double maggot on this line. If I was getting really pestered by roach, or sometimes you can get small perch and gudgeon and things like that on this line, then you can up it to, to three maggots just to try and avoid them. But I'll stick with two for now, because fish like that crucian are more than welcome. Again, every time you go in, just throw some more maggots over where you're fishing and just lower your rig nice and neatly over the top of it. So this short line's not been quite as what we hope to be honest since we've gone on it. So what I'm trying now is a little trick which sometimes works to be fair. A red and a white maggot, something a little bit different. That's why it's always worth just getting a few whites in with your reds. It can, can make a difference as a change bait. So I'm just going to keep repeating the same, just throwing the maggots in and you're basically just hoping that these bigger fish do turn up. But one important thing is not to waste too much time on it. You can always come back and have another go, but the last thing you want to do is basically undo, undo all of the good work that you've done by keeping fish going in the net all day. So you don't want to sit here for 20 minutes without a bite, just waiting for that one fish to come along. So we'll give it five minutes, and if we don't get a fish, then go back off it, keep putting some more fish into the net on a different line. You keep feeding it and you just hope that at some point they're going to turn up. Okay, so that short line wasn't quite as good as we expected. So, as I said, we're not going to waste too much time doing it. We're going to have a quick look down the edge and if that's no good either, we're just going to keep feeding those two and go back out onto the 11 metre one to keep fish going in the net. So, although I've been feeding it by hand, a little bit different with the edge, I'm going to put 
maybe 20 maggots into a pot. Once I start fishing it, I just want to be a little bit more accurate with this one. And then we are fishing just a little little bit off the bank today, just in line with a, a platform on the other bank. And I'm just going to feed the maggots. So a little nuisance fish straight away then. So we're just going to lower it down over that spot and hopefully something a little bit bigger is going to be sat there waiting. So. Even though it's freezing cold, there are barbel in this lake, which you can at times catch them in the cold weather. If you're going to catch them, this is probably where you're going to get them in, in your kind of your deeper margin area. You just need to make sure you don't forget to feed those other lines while you're fishing down here. So throw some more maggots on the short one. And then um, this is not one that I feed really regularly because I don't want to overfeed the eye but just put now and again just put a few maggots out on that long line again not exactly what we we're looking for on our first visit down the edge but a little good gym which can happen so that's generally a sign that there's no decent fish there so what I'm going to do is, for now, I'm going to come off that line and just keep feeding it for a bit longer. So, again, I can just throw the bait down, down that edge from here. So, I'll probably up the feed a little bit now we've had a small fish there because we do want to avoid those tiny, tiny fish uh, and at least get some quality silver fish feeding down there. And so we'll go, go back out long now. So I'm gonna, as I've not really been feeding a lot of bait there, the fish may well be back on the bottom again. So I'm gonna start on the bottom and then we'll just, just see how we get on out there. into small fish straight away. So often the case when you go on the line straight away, you're going to catch things like roach. But I'm pretty confident that those eyed and better quality F1s will come back again. It's just a matter of time. They do move about even in the winter, they'll swim, swim about and take a little while to find the bait again. There we go, straight back into some better fish out long on the bottom. So, it's quite often the case to be honest this time of year, the fish will feed but they just don't want to feed close to you, so the longer you go the better it's going to be, so a little F1 there. I'm quite happy catching those. Slightly better one, I think. I'm not sure what this one is, to be fair. It's not fighting like an eyed, so. Yeah, another little left one. Plenty of those about today, which is good to see. So, these are the sort of fish that you can catch on pellets sometimes as well. But I think maggot fishing is just that little bit quicker. And obviously, you're just going to catch everything else in between them as well. So there we go, another nice fish to finish out here. Before we have another go on that short line. 
It's that number nine draw a slip's perfect for this fishing because you can just land absolutely anything on it. Another nice crucian. A few of those today, which is nice. Nice chunky little fish. Right, nice little way to end on that swim. So let's get the other rig back out. And then we'll try on that short one again. So I'll just break my pole down to make it easier. Right, so two red maggots, always the starting point. feed some bait right over where we're going to be fishing and then just lower that rig in over the top of it. I hope something settled there. It is often the very last hour of the match where this line comes to life. It's not very often you catch on it before that point. There we go, that's a proper fish I think on that short line. So just just waited probably a minute or two for that bite. So only a small F1, so similar to the ones we were catching out long, but that's quite a good sign at this stage. It means that they've built up enough confidence to come up closer in. So there we go, just a nice small F1. Pop him in the net. So it might be that we just keep on feeding that line. We'll have another quick go now. But once those fish that sort of size start coming in, then hopefully that will draw those bigger F1s into the peg. So there we go. Another bite on the short line. And another small F1. Which is good. Good news. A little bit better that one. I think on that short line it's proven to be better to feed a little bit more bait but less often as there are some silverfish about and I just want to make sure that those maggots are getting to the bottom where we're fishing. That's one area of the peg where you, you don't want the fish to be spread at different layers of the water. I don't mind that on the long line that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to achieve to, to catch them at all different depths but here I just want to be able to sit there and catch them right on the bottom so I've opted it now to maybe 20, 25 maggots. Just feed it once at the start when you drop the rig in. And then I'm just sitting there and waiting. So I'm pretty confident feeding that many maggots that some will be getting to the bottom. There's another one. Started to line them up now. Nothing massive, but nice little fish to catch. So on my long line on that 11 meter rig, when I'm fishing on the bottom, you notice that I, I'm quite often re-dropping my rig in if I've not had a bite or lifting it about and moving the bait around. And that's to kind of mimic the feed that's going in because I'm constantly feeding with that catapult. Whereas on this line, because I'm feeding that one quantity of bait and I basically want these maggots to just stay dead still once on the bottom, I'm effectively just sitting there so you just want to keep the, the rig as still as possible. You're just looking for any sort of indication. So there we go. Been a little bit more patient for this one. So I think once we land this one, we'll just keep feeding it and 
rotate onto one of the other lines. Another little F1. They're great, these stocky F1s. Well, when venues put them in in the winter, they're very obliging, which is uh, good news in the cold weather. So let's uh, pack that one away for a second. And I think what we'll do is we'll have another look down that edge. Just in case something's uh, something decided to feed there. I think this line could be tricky today, just given how clear the water is. It's, uh, it's exceptionally clear, so generally you'll find that the fish do want to be a little bit further away from the bank in those conditions, but always a line that's worth feeding, as you never know. So, again, make sure you line up with your spot, tip your bait in, and then you just want to make sure your float is in the perfect place, lined up with your marker then. If you're going to catch some quality fish, this is often where you're going to get them. So even if you only catch two fish there, it's worth feeding because those two fish could be the difference between you catching 50 pounds and 60 pounds and either just framing or winning the match. So as I say, always worth feeding. It's, it's not going to work every time. Today, I think it's going to be difficult, but we'll see if anything comes out, it'll be interesting. Small fish again. So generally, if I catch a small fish down the edge, then as I said before, I will just keep refeeding it. I won't bother dropping back down there again because chances are there's some quality fish there, but they're not going to be those small silver fish. So this goes against the grain of what I've done today a little bit, but as we've now been down there twice and caught a small fish both times, I'm going to get the big pot out and I'm going to put a few more maggots in there just to try and feed those off. So, decent handful of maggots, so that's probably about a quarter of a pot, which is quite a lot of bait for this time of year, but this is almost a throwaway line. You haven't got anything to lose. I wouldn't do this on my main catching line, but put those in there, and then we can go out and fish somewhere else again and be happy knowing that there's always gonna be some bait there for a little while at least that will help draw something in. <clears throat> okay, so we're coming to the end of the session now. We've had an absolutely fantastic day here at Western Pools. We started off by catching some, some F1s and some silverfish on the bottom, and we've come up and caught some absolute quality eyes shallow, which is brilliant for this time of year. The short line wasn't amazing, but we did catch some nice F1s in the end. But unfortunately, that edge line was a step too far in these clear conditions. We just didn't manage to catch much there today at all, just a couple of small silverfish. But always worth putting that line in, as I keep on saying. So all that leaves is we're just going to have one more uh, chuck on the long line, fishing on that deep shallow rig, try and catch an eyed, which has been, been by far the best tactic today really, and we've had a really nice net full of them. So let's see if we can get one more for the cameras before we sign off. So I'm just going to repeat that, that little tip that I've told you a couple of times today. So just ship three quarters of the way out and then feed. In the clear water, you don't want to be having the pole over the head all the time, a minimum, minimal amount of time. So just flick that rig right into where we've been feeding and it's absolutely instant when they're there. I've hooked one within a second, literally. So nice and steady. That's, that's one really good tip with these fish. They're all quality. If you're only looking for 50 or 60 pound, if you catch a fish of a pound, you can catch them quickly. You don't want to be losing them. Nice long landing net handle, and then into the net. Absolutely brilliant. There we go. So, we're gonna need the disgorge of that one. Always a good sign. So there we go, a quality Western Pools eyed and a great way to finish the day. Pop that one in the net. 
So I hope you've all enjoyed the tips and tricks from today. The one thing to take away from today is it's not to be single-minded, just, just fish a, a bait like maggots that will catch everything and just use them in different ways, different areas of your peg to make sure you're getting bites constantly. It makes for a much better day. And when it comes to the weigh-in at the end of the match or the pleasure session, you're always going to end up with a lot more fish in the net than if you were fishing for, say, carp and just sitting there waiting a long time for bites. So make sure you like and subscribe to the Press Innovations YouTube channel and social media pages and you'll see this video along with many others coming soon.